Hi, boys and girls. It's time for another edition of the LL Spring Sports Roundtable brought to you by Penn Medicine, Lancaster General Health, Sports Medicine. My name is Mike Gross. I'm your humble host. (laughs) Seated to my left, John Walk. Seated to my right, Jeff Reinhardt. We cover spring sports in the Lancaster Lebanon League, and it's getting down to playoff time in those. Uh, so we're going to have a lot of stuff about league playoffs and, and, and looking forward to the district playoffs in this edition. But first, we start, as we normally do, with one of the intrepid John Walk's remote video reports. John, take it away. Yeah, and again, uh, this is going to be the second straight week that we talked to a Lampeter Strasburg boys student athlete. But it just happened to be the case okay. that after we chatted with Luke Wiley last week, uh, the day after, I got an email from... Mama Ridenball saying, hey, yeah. Andrew Ridenball, four sports student athlete, football kicker, soccer player in the fall, mm. swimmer in the winter, and boys tennis player in the spring, 13 varsity letters. Wow. He's kind of under the radar type. He's not, you know, super great at all of them, um, but, you know, collectively uh, does a pretty good job. So Tyler and I went out there, chatted with what, what it's like being a, a four sports student athlete at LS mm-hmm. and just kind of happened to be where there were no teammates out there on the tennis courts. So uh, Andrew gave me a racket and we played a little what? bit of tennis after we wow. chatted as well. So wow. thanks for Andrew for <laughs> indulging me on that. So with that, we'll go out to LS, chat with Andrew Ridenball about tennis and all things sports. Here with Andrew Ridenball, Lampeter Strasburg. Um, Andrew, reason we're out here, I got an email from your mom about a week ago telling me, hey, Here's this four sport, four sport student athlete, I think 14 varsity letters, something yeah, like that. Yeah. Yep. Um, and my apologies, I'm kind of late in getting around to this, but I think it's fantastic, good on your part. First off, how do you juggle so many sports on top of school, on top of homework? Uh, it's definitely a challenge, but I always put schoolwork first and I always try to get my work done ahead of time. Um, and then, you know, every now and again, I have to sacrifice some sleep, but I always do that smartly, never before competition day. All right, let's go through the seasons. In the fall, what sports are you playing? Uh, fall, I do soccer and football. And then in the winter, it's swimming. What events there? Uh, 50 free is my main event. Uh, I'm all freestyle, freestyle sprinting. 50 free and 100 free is where I'm at. And in the spring, uh, what sport there? Uh, tennis. How does your background and the other three sports in which you participate translate over to a tennis court? Um, so I kind of like stay in shape all year round. And I work different parts of my body. Uh, so soccer obviously builds up my legs so and endurance. So I can run all around the court, and especially in singles, that helps me out a lot, especially in three-set matches. Uh, swimming definitely builds my triceps and biceps for, you know, uh, stronger topspin shots for tennis. Um, and for those who haven't seen you play, how would you describe your skill set as a tennis player? Um, definitely a baseline player. I like to control volleys from the baseline and make my opponent run. And apparently you have a good backhand? Uh, yeah, I have a one-handed backhand, which I actually learned mostly from YouTube. So first of all, my freshman year, I tried out tennis, and I was started with a two-hand backhand, and it felt really unnatural. So then I watched tennis, professional tennis, for a little while, and I saw a one-hand backhand from Dominic Team, and I was like, I got to try this out. I tried it out, and I used YouTube as well, and a couple hundred repetitions later, I had it down pretty good. And college in the works for you? Uh, I plan to go down to University of Tampa uh, in the spring of next year um, and the first semester I'm going to Millersville University. All right, thank you, Andrew, for that. And since we're on boys tennis, might as well stick in that because now we're done with District 3. I do want to recap a little bit. Last week we were going into doubles and team stuff. Um, Boys tennis, District 3 champions. 2A doubles, George Brubaker and Connor Ott from Lancaster Catholic. 3A doubles uh, from Palmyra, Aiden and Tyler Mahaffey. Um, and then 2A team champ from Lancaster Country Day, and the 3A team champ is Dallas Town. Now the state qualifiers, we have a bunch coming out of the LL League. States and boys tennis starts May 27th, which is a week from Friday, I believe. Um, but they do have a lot of you know heats and prelims and all that stuff to figure out the seating and all that. Yeah. With that said, in the team, 3A team, Cedar Crest is going. 2A team, Lancaster Country Day and Peckway Valley are going. 2A doubles, George Brubaker and Connor Ott from Lancaster Catholic. Wade Stoltzfus and Jose Itegi, my apologies to Jose if I'm pronouncing that wrong there, from Peckway Valley. Um, Reese 
Gerd Harry and Will Stillman from Lancaster Mennonite. Um, and then two A singles, now Abadir and Freddie Bloom, teammates from Lancaster Country Day. And finally, three A singles, Cooper Lehman from Hemfield and Michael Georgellis from Mannheim Township. All those guys and teams that I just mentioned going right. on the States, we'll chat about that more in the coming weeks. That's impressive. It's a good list. Yeah, That's and a really good kid list. To, to keep up on there. And I believe of those, Niles probably the defending state champ of all those guys, but uh, all the rest of those teams have chances at getting medals as well. Absolutely. All right, with that, let's go I, to, go ahead. I think you I think you pronounced Stoltzfus correctly. Though. Stoltzfus was <laughs> definitely pronounced correctly. <laughs> uh, let's go to baseball. Let's go to baseball. baseball. Baseball and Ballantine beer, as they used to say years ago when the Phillies were on. Um, we're down to the semifinals, which are starting in a couple of hours. I'm headed to Ephrata this evening for those matchups. The quarterfinals were uh, Saturday at the home fields of the uh, section champions. And um, uh, three of the games were, surprisingly, three of the games were 10-run rule kind of blowouts. Uh, but one of them was a really tight, tense game. It was a heavyweight match. It was the one that you would have guessed would be that way. Uh, Mannheim Township beats Mannheim Central for the Ooh. second time in a week. Wow. Uh, two to one behind a complete game by a guy who might be making the case as the MVP of our league this year, JT Weaver, uh, probably the best offensive player in the league. And this was as good a pitching performance if you know the quality of Central's lineup uh, as, we've, as we've seen. So anyway, that game was two to one. Central scored in this in the seventh and had a guy had a guy on base when the game ended, but they stuck mm. with Township stuck with Weaver and he got the complete game and got it done. The other ones, um, effort of eleven to one over Lancaster Catholic, ten run rule. Wow! I think that was a little bit of a surprise. Really good pitching by Tanner McCracken uh, and a huge game for another of the best players in our league, the catcher for effort of uh, a Koi Schwanger, three for three with a triple, a double, a walk. Three RBIs, two runs scored. Oh, wow. Not bad. I remember that game didn't go seven innings. Uh, the other uh, LS beat Anvil Cleona, uh, thirteen to three. LS is kind of rolling right now. I think they won seven in a row, mm -hmm. and uh, and although they have eight losses, and it looks like they're going to get in, they're in districts. That was an issue. They yeah. they went from like number eighteen in the five A rankings up to the last I saw they were thirteenth. So they're wow. I think they're. They're in pretty good shape. And the other game, which is a game that I that I covered, um, Warwick, uh, really dominant. Uh, beat, um, I, I'm trying, who did they beat? I can't remember I who they beat. Anyway, Northern they, Lebanon? Yeah, no. <laughs> no. Not softball. Never mind. <laughs> God. Anyway, the Warriors are 18-2. Uh, and two. Mm. They've hit 25 home runs. Whoa. Wow. Uh, Nick Slogic, who hit one in this game, has hit that was his eighth home run of the year. Nice. This is a team with power arms and power bats. Uh, one of the best teams, uh, I think, in District Three, uh, and they will play Ephrata tonight in the in the uh, in one of the games in a doubleheader at Ephrata's War Memorial Field. And the other one is uh, uh, LS against uh, Township. Man, I'm uh, Township. Uh, so you know, I, I think the three best teams in the league are Township Central and Warwick. Uh, and, and Township is going to have to be two of the three to win the league title. You know, so that maybe maybe Warwick is a, is a slight favorite, although I'm probably underselling effort on LS a little bit. Sorry about that uh, for those folks. But anyway, that's baseball. The championship game is Thursday, which is just to, you know, as you as you watch this, it'll be probably be tomorrow uh, at Clipper Magazine Stadium. Nice. Who's there? Give us your best guess. Uh, Township and Warwick. I think so. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, that's uh, teams that have big arms and uh, and and good lineups. I mean, these are good teams. This is uh, the best teams in our league in baseball are good. JT Weaver also a basketball player. Nice. We've mentioned that a number of times. That's correct. JT yeah. Weaver is a basketball player and a good one. Does he has like 110 stolen bases. This he has like 110 stolen bases, and his own base percentage is like 600. And he obviously can pitch. I and mean, they 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 gave him the ball for their biggest game of the year. Okay, but what's his OPS plus? <laughs> uh, it's over a thousand. Must be. Yeah. JT yeah. Weaver. Or it's over 1.0, I guess technically. Yeah. Nice. Um, we're volleying, Ryan. Volleyball. Okay. Let's hear about it. Good stuff. All right, we hit the finish line with the LL, uh, with the LL stuff. Congrats, Warwick. Hello. Third straight 
uh, season, don't forget 2020 was bagged because of COVID. So for the third straight season, Hemfield and Warwick got together in the championship match. Monday night at Cocalico, great crowd packed. You never know we're in a pandemic anymore, quite frankly. I don't know, but I digress. <laughs> packed house at Cocalico, uh, Warwick wins three to one. Hemfield won the first set and everybody's like, uh oh, Hemfield, here we go. Warwick comes back, wins the second set, 29 to 27. It was epic, tied it up, and then Warwick took that mo and just ran with it. And they win three to one. Second time Warwick beat Hemfield three to one in like two weeks, May 3rd, Warwick beat Hemfield to force that tie in section one over in Lidditz that night. Third meeting was for league gold and Warwick wins three to one. They were, they were really good. So third straight year, the th third straight season, those two met in the finals. Hemfield won the first two. Hemfield had won the last three league championships, dating back to 2018. Warwick wins its first LL title. This stat kind of blew me away. In the history of LL boys volleyball, before last, before Monday night, Lancaster Mennonite, Penn Manor, and Hemfield won every championship. Wow. Hemfield had won 24 of them. Yeah. So they're on hold on 24. They were going for 25 on Monday. But three teams before Warwick did it had won the league since like 96 or 97. Pretty amazing. So Hemfield denied their 25th title, snapped their th uh, three in a row championships. Congrats, Warwick. Yes. So boys volleyball LL League has only been around since mid-90s. 96, 97. Really? Yeah. All right. Something like that. And it, it, volleyball is similar to, to, to LAX in this sense. It hasn't been around as long. Early adopting yeah. programs dominate, and now that's starting to okay. change. I guess because yeah. I went to Penn Manor and I kind of came up through and, oh, of course, boys volleyball, Penn Manor, they're always good. Yeah. So, yeah, that's yeah. Nice. They won, they've won like two LL titles. Sorry. Mennonite won <laughs> one. Hemfield. <laughs> <laughs> won all the rest sure. of them all and right. now Warwick has one so congrats coach uh, Gajeki and that whole crew that they're really good here moving forward okay two guys I got to mention the league announced it's all stars Monday night after the finals section MVPs a couple of really good players here section one Caden Bonner senior setter for Hemfield showed up to the finals on Monday night and his whole uh, left wrist and a thumb are taped and here he was, he got injured in the semifinals, gutted it out, played in the championship match, one of the best setters in the league. He's superb. Um, he's the section one MVP. Section two MVP, not a shocker here. Elijah Laser from Lancaster Mennonite helped them win the section two title. He's going to St. Francis University D1 to play volleyball there. Mm. Uh, fabulous player, great hitter, swinger, kills, spikes. Boom. The whole spiel, he's fantastic. So congrats to Caden and Elijah. They're your section MVPs this year. Okay, um, turning to districts, that gets started this week on Thursday. Three matches Thursday. The two AAA teams that got in, Warwick and Hemfield, they're back at it on Thursday night, both at home. Warwick plays Carlisle, Hemfield plays Red Lion. Loser, out. Winner goes to Saturday. Double A, Thursday night. Cocalico, last team in at number 10. Eagles are in. They go uh, to Topton, Berks County, and play Brandywine Heights. The seven seed, I'm gonna go there. I'm gonna gas up the car. <laughs> I'm gonna drive to the other side of Berks County. I hope you're gonna gas up the car. I'm gonna gas it up, spend $58 to fill my tank, and okay. uh, go to Cocalico, Brandywine Heights, uh, double A on Thursday night. Saturday, big day. Any of those games from Thursday win, they advance to Saturday. Triple A winners. If Warwick wins, they get Exeter or Wilson. That'll be an all Burks first rounder. If Hemfield wins, they get Cumberland Valley or State College. Both of those would be fantastic. If Cocalico wins, they get York Suburban, which is a powerhouse in boys volleyball. They're the defending runner up in 2A. Lower Dolphin is the defending champ and the one seed. Also Saturday, Garden Spot at home against York Catholic. And I will see you at Lancaster Mennonite on Saturday, one o'clock. Mannheim Central at Lancaster Mennonite, section two rivals. Mennonite swept the season series. Loser goes home. So there's a ton riding on that match Saturday at one o'clock at Mennonite. I will see you there. Again, quarterfinal, uh, quarterfinal losers are also out. Top four in AAA go to states. Top three in 2A go to states. 
District finals are next Thursday, neutral gyms. It's usually at like Dallas Town or Central York. Keep an eye on that. Lastly, Lamar Fonestock, E-Town coach, uh, announced at the end of the season that he is stepping down after the second of his two stints coaching E-Town boys. Nine or 10 years, he was in charge of the Bears program. Don't know where he's gonna land, but he said, I'm done. Uh, I'm gonna move on here in my life and do other things. So, no more Lamar, Fonestock, and E-Town. We'll see who gets that job. <sighs> I'm out of breath. <laughs> uh, good stuff. District Volleyball next, Warwick League champs. There you go. Thank you, Jeffrey. You got it. I'm gonna, quickly, I'm gonna quickly do softball because we, I, don't, I have, uh, don't have a ton of information, but softball basically on the same schedule as baseball. Uh, tonight, Tuesday, uh, is the league semifinals, which will pit Warwick against LS. Hello. Uh, <laughs> Warwick beat Northern Lebanon, which had a very good year this year and looked like a very legitimate team, eight to five in the quarterfinals on Saturday. Uh, LS beat Peckway Valley 15 to four. Mm. LS has been kind of LS-ish in the last yeah. month or so. Um, and uh, they would probably be favored to get to the finals where they are, where I would say the co-favorite would be Penn Manor, which beat yeah. uh, Manheim Central five to one in their quarterfinal on Saturday. Man, I'm Central actually must have pushed pretty well to hold, to hold them to five. Hold them to five. <laughs> them to five. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, uh, uh, um, they are now, Penn Manor is now 19 and two. Wow. They've, had, they've had a great year, one of the best teams in the area. Uh, sort of analogous to Warwick in baseball. Power arms, power bats, and, and all that stuff. And Solanco, this was a little bit of a surprise. 11 to one over Anvil Cleone in the Damn other Rondo. quarterfinal. Yeah. The margin of victory there, much as in some of these baseball games that were blowouts. <laughs> I think are a little bit of a surprise. So it's Penn Manor against Solanco and uh, and uh, Warwick against LS. That is uh, tonight, Tuesday at Millersville University's very nice uh, oh, yeah. softball facility. And then the winners play Thursday, seven o'clock also at Millersville. So that's softball. John, what do you got for us? I've got a whole bunch of track and field uh, notes for you guys, oh, considering boy. we're coming off a weekend of the League 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 this weekend. That's a big one. Yep. Uh, how do you want me to handle this? Do you want me to go down the whole list of winners? I want you, and, I want uh, you to find a theme okay, and find call theme. your material. All right, let's do that. Uh, boys and girls, team champs, McCaskey, okay. both sides. Girls side, McCaskey, they won four by 800 meter relay, the 1600 meter run, the four by 100 meter relay, the 800 meter run, the 200 meter dash, wow. the 3200 meter run, and the four by 400 meter relay. McCaskey girls have sprinters and distance runners. So they're, uh, think of all the events yeah. that encompasses, including and especially the relays. Their 3200 relay, as I understand it, has a really good chance that's to a, win a state championship. They're generally, uh, the girls' side, generally on track. Like, that's that's their forte, which yeah. boys were, is going to be the field I'm going to get here yep. in a second. A couple other uh, female uh, student athletes I want to point out for LL championships on the girls' side. Two medals, Gianna Long, Effort won the 100 uh, meter and the 400 meter. Maddie Nyer, you know her from yeah, basketball. Her well. uh, from Mannheim Central, she won the long jump and triple jump. So congrats to all those gals. If you would guess what, what event she was good in in track, those were the two you'd guess. Maybe from even Maddie? high jump. She'd yeah. be a jumper. You'd yeah. think of her as a jumper. Yeah. yeah, definitely. Okay, and then on the boys' side, McCaskey, they beat Mannheim Township in the team points 100 to 98 to buy oh. two points. Whoa. And, and didn't Cedar Crest beat both of those teams in dual meets? During the regular Correct. season. Correct, yeah, and yeah, not only did. that, Cedar Crest, speak of Cedar Crest, they also won the 4 by 800 meter relay mm. and they won the 4 by 100 meter relay. And those are generally uh, events that McCaskey's been pretty good in. And they were, again, were right there, but where they won most of their, their big points uh, came in the field events. Troy Johnson, two gold medals for him triple. in the long jump uh, and the triple jump. And then teammates John Stewart won the discus, mm -hmm. and Matthew Remash, uh, quarterback. quarterback, right, oh, yeah. won the javelin. So he's got a good arm there yeah, as does. well. Big arm. Um, and uh, also want to just give a shout out quick to Aiden Hodge from Hemfield. Uh, I know him from cross country. He's been one of the top runners for a couple years now, and uh, came back and had a couple battles uh, with Colin Whitaker out of Lampeter Strasburg, mm -hmm. and edged him in both the 600 meter run and 3200 meter run. So. Busy weekend uh, for LL championships and districts is upcoming. Did Irvine get the 
pole vault record? Uh, she got twelve six maybe. I don't know if she got the record. She did. Well, yeah, she had twelve six, and then I believe she went for thirteen and couldn't get it. Is what, if I recall reading that. She should be a kid to watch yeah. it. Yeah. A couple inches. Yeah. 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 Don't yeah. Yeah. Half a foot. Yeah. 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 You can tell the weather's getting warmer too. The times are the times <laughs> oh, are getting yeah. lower, yeah. and the, and the cream is rising. Factor. That's a yeah. big factor in all of these rising. sports, really, honestly, because. The weather these kids are dealing with in March is pretty rude. And this shout out to Mr. Neverly for handling all that stuff. And check out his story on Ted Fitzgerald, 51-year 51 51 volunteer at the yeah. Track and Field oh, Championships. Yeah. Cool little story there. We want to talk lacrosse? Do That's it. what we got left. Do it. <laughs> do it. Do it. All right. Uh, Lax me, John. Lax quick me. recap of league championships. Manheim Township won them both, hence my color scheme today. Really? Township, on the boys' no. side. Township won both? I'm still trying to effort this on the boys' side because Hempfield and Township started playing like mid-90s, but record keeping mm. was kind of, you know, here nor there. Uh, but anyway, since 2003 onward, Manheim Township has now won 11 league crowns. Mm. They have met Hempfield in the league final 15 times. They oh. now hold the edge 8-7. to seven. Girls' side, Manheim Township girls have won their 12th straight league crown 14th league crown overall districts uh, that started this week monday night lampier strasburg and calico both won so they're going to go to class 2a uh, district 3 class 2a mm -hmm. quarterfinals this coming wednesday number five lampier strasburg goes to number four redland number nine cocalico goes to top seeded twin valley also happening wednesday night in 3a top seed in manheim township will host number nine dallas town and second seeded Hemfield would host number seven Southwestern. Um, and that's on the girls' side of things. And then on boys' side, by the time you watch this, we will have known the results from Tuesday night. First round matchups Lancaster Country Day, Lancaster Catholic going to number seven Palmyra, and then number 10 Penn Manor going to number seven Red Lion. Should they win, they would move on to Thursday's quarterfinals. Already set to play there four LL League teams. Number four, Cocalico, highest nice. seed in program history nice. out of districts. This is a team. Uh, most wins in like five years. This is uh, if they would win on on Thursday, they would advance to the semifinals for the first time. So cool little story there. Lampeter Strasburg uh, will also host a Class 2A quarterfinal. Um, winners TBD, and then up in 3A uh, on Thursday night quarterfinal top seed of Mannheim Township, and number four mm -hmm. Hempfield will also both host quarterfinal round matchups on Thursday night. And if you want to know this, boys LL League All Stars came out late, late Monday night, right oh, after yeah. I filed my Cocalico uh, Lampier Strasburg game story. Uh, so top on the Lax uh, Lax Laxter online the cross page to check out all that stuff. 12 titles in a row for Township Girls? Yes. Now we've been on that 100 kick with the 100 streak, you know? But that'd be 24 straight league tournament games. But who in, the, who in the world's won 12 championships in a row? Right. I, and in, in not only that, well, yeah. they had that 101 game streak, LL regular season snap. Well, before that, it was like 43 straight. So wow. you add that into whatever the, the league thing is, and they've probably pretty much been like 158 to three over That's the last amazing. 14 years. Something like, like Hemfield that. Boys so. Volleyball, they have all those 24 titles, but I don't know if they won 12, 12 in a row. Right. There was always like a Penn Manor in there and or somebody. I've yeah. Covered, I think wow. eight girls finals now and maybe you can count two that were really close mm. the most recent being country day went to double overtime like seven years ago with uh, oh, Kelly that. Daggett and the crew I so that. yeah township girls lacrosse underclassmen great JV are they loaded again for next year do next they, year they we're looking ahead to next I know. year do they lose like 15 seniors or I mean, no they'll, be... they'll return their entire defense I know that oh. and they have a couple midfielders that are coming back so and kids in the pipeline right no and that that's a thing if, if uh they can be strong in the mid in the draw control and strong on d mm -hmm. their offense is awesome um so if they can kind of hang tough in the other areas they should mm -hmm. go far in states wowzer yeah <laughs> should okay. be fun wow. okay. <laughs> all right guys all right. i think we covered it there you go uh, good stuff we'll be back next week with league champions and uh district playoffs yes. lots of other things to talk about this has been the LL Spring Sports Roundtable brought to you by Penn Medicine, Lancaster General Health Sports Medicine. For John Walk, for Jeff Reinhardt, I am Mike Gross, and we'll see you later.